10. Good morning. Welcome to St. Peter's Evangelical Lutheran in Brooklyn, New York. Pastor Dave Banke on 4th of July weekend. We are gathering at our summer, sun, sun, summer worship time of 9.30 instead of 10. Some of you were so happy about that change, you came at 9. You came at 9. And I applaud you for that, but we're not starting till 9.30, uh, at, at least this week. You all want to come at 9? No. Okay. 9.30 is good. Anyway, welcome again, and we're going to, uh, on this weekend, um, it's the only Sunday. Remember, for two years we had the Pledge of Allegiance during service every Sunday during the pandemic. And then after the, the pandemic eased up and we could come back together in person, we have taken the flag back to the back of the church, except today. Today is the 4th of July weekend, and we are going to begin with two thank yous. One is to our healthcare workers and the other one is to our country okay so let's rise and begin in that way I'll have announcements later on this morning uh, of importance for all of us first the healthcare workers the first responders the those who serve and protect those who care for others those who are teachers and hopefully are off for the summer uh, those who are in any way involved in protecting and saving people. Let's give thanks for God to God for them. One, two, three. And we have some in our congregation this morning who do just those things, so thank you all. Secondly, we're going to uh, pledge allegiance, uh, as we do on this Sunday uh, each year thanking God for the gift of the United States of America, thanking God for your heritage. Uh, many people in this congregation came from another country to be in this country. So we thank God for all of, the, all of the nations of the world, but especially for this nation in which we are going to say exactly what we believe here. So let us pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. That's a beautiful start. Okay. And just to highlight that, we're going to sing Glory, Glory, Hallelujah, one of our uh, patriotic songs. It's really from the Civil War, and remember how we fought for freedom for all people in that, in that conflict uh, many, many years ago. Here we go. have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling at the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He has loosed his faithful lightning, his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. Sound the trumpet that shall never call retreat. He is sifting out all human heart before his judgment seat. Oh, be swift, my soul, to answer him. And my feet are God is marching on. Glory, glory. Transfigures you and me. He died to make us holy. Let us live to make all free. While God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah.
We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart. Confess our sins unto God our Father, imploring him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. We're going to sing a song of the day of the weekend called God is Good. God is so good. God is so good. faithful and he is faithful to forgive we confess our sins almighty God merciful father pray for your boundless mercy forgive my sins give me your Holy Spirit for the amendment of my life and bring me to life everlasting amen God is merciful and gracious, and he grants forgiveness through our Lord Jesus Christ to all who confess their sins. As a called and ordained servant of his word, I therefore announce to you the full and free pardon of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And on this Sunday, uh, we dedicate this moment of praise to America the Beautiful. O oh, beautiful for spacious skies. Heroes prove 
and every gain divine. Oh, beautiful for patriot dream that sees beyond the years, thine alabaster cities gleam undimmed by human tears. America, America, God shed his grace on thee, and crown thy home with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Lord God, you call us to go where Christ leads. Turn us from the ways of the world. Guide us to fullness of joy in the spirit, where bodies and souls rest secure. And grant us strength to follow the way of the cross, which frees us to love one another in word and deed. Amen. You may be seated, and we continue as we listen to the word of the Lord. Okay. This morning's first lesson, it's from the book of Psalms, number 66, verses 1 to 9. Make a, joy, make a joyful noise to God. All the earth, sing the glory of his name. Give to him glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. Because of your great power, your enemies cringe before you. All the earth worships you. They sing praises to you. Sing praises to your name. See, Sire, come and see what God has done. He is awesome in his deeds among mortals. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the river on foot. They were rejoiced in him. Who rose not mighty forever, whose eyes keep watch on the nation? Let the rebellious not exalt themselves. Celebrate, O God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. Who has kept us among the living and has not let, us, let his, our feet slip? This is the word of the Lord. And our second reading, Deacon and Deacon today, the Deacons read. Good morning, brothers and sisters. God is good all the time. All the time. All the time. Amen, amen. Our second lesson for this morning is from the book of Galatians, chapter 6, verses 7 to 10. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For you reap whatever you sow. If you sow to your own flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow to the Spirit, you will reap eternal life from the Spirit. So let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at the harvest time if we do not give up. So then, whenever you have the opportunity, let us do work for the good of all, and especially for those of the family of faith. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So our theme this morning, oh, come on up, Yolanda. Microphone movement, there you go. Segunda lectura, tomada del libro de Gálatas, capítulo 6, versículo del 7 al 10. No se engañen, de Dios nadie se burla, cada uno cosecha de lo que siembra. El que siembra para agradar a Dios, a su naturaleza pecaminosa, 
de esa misma naturaleza cosechará destrucción. El que siembra para agradar al Espíritu, del Espíritu cosechará vida eterna. No nos cansemos de hacer el bien, porque a su debido tiempo cosecharemos si no nos damos por vencidos. Por lo tanto, siempre que tengamos la oportunidad, hagamos bien a todos y en especial a los de la familia de la fe. Esta es palabra de Dios. Te alabamos, Señor. Amén. Muchísimas gracias. And that's the word of the Lord on which we're going to base our message in a few moments. And so we're going to sing a song that gets us going on that theme of how we in love serve one another with this song, Make Me a Servant. So this is a choir song, but everybody should know it by now. We've been singing it here for many, many years. Just know this on the second time through. Make me a, make me a servant today, today. You're going, to hit, you're going to hit that last today twice. I hope you do a better job of singing it than me just then, but uh, it'll be fine. Let's rise and we sing, Make Me a Servant. Make me a servant, humble and Lift up those who are weak, and may the prayer of my heart always be, make me a servant, make me a servant, make me a servant today. Make me a servant, humble and meek. Let me lift up those who are weak And may the prayer of my heart always be Make me a servant Make me a servant Make me a servant today gospel for this fourth Sunday after Pentecost is from the book of Luke in chapter 10 beginning at the first verse glory to the Lord after this the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go he said to them the harvest is plentiful but the laborers are few Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, for say, peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborers deserve to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you, cure the sick who are there, and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And you may have a seat as we prepare for the message from Vicar Jose. Those in the back, come on in and have a seat. We're in full realization that this 930 thing is not embedded in everybody's brain yet. <laughs> Good, morning. Good morning. Okay, I know it's 9 
50. We can do better than this. Good morning. That's what we need a fellowship hour. Yes, that's, that's why. why. That's why. Starting it right back up. That's right. Uh, greeting to all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in this fourth Sunday after Pentecost and in this wonderful Fourth of July weekend. So, in less than 24 hours, we're celebrating the 247th birthday of the United States of America, the Declaration of Independence. So, we're going to celebrate it from later on today all the way down to tomorrow night. See the fireworks, it's gonna be good. So for today's message, guys, let's go to talk about the second reading for today, the pistol, the letter to the Galatians. We're gonna talk about serve. We're gonna talk about being servant, all different types of servants, and how we here can serve. So when we're talking about being servant, I know the, uh, the words is coming straight to us. Those that are up here, right? Those that receive the call to serve God, from Bishop Benke all the way down to deacons, speakers, spiritual leaders. But when I was reading the, Galatians, the, book, the letters of the Galatians, I also find out that when we're talking about serve, it's not also includes just us up here, it includes everybody. I think so that we all have a particular way that we can serve, right? So if we go to, let's go to Wikipedia, let's go to Google really quick and see what the word of serve means. So the word of serve means uh, perform duties or service to another person or organization. That's what the word serve means, right? So now we're talking about being servant, so we're talking about that it's the one that performs those duties and services, right? And we have all types of services. We talk about military, those that serve in the law, those that serve in restaurants, those that work in hospitals, right? Um, it's all type of different servants. But that's also including the servants in the church. It's got to be focused on us right here in church. So when the, the Scriptures talk about be a servant, right? I think so. I um, mean, the second reading was saying really clear. Um, when you, let me see, let's go back really clear. Right here is this one, yes. Um, when they said, but you sow to the spirit, you repeat eternal life. When you sow to corruption, you will find the destruction, you found the flesh. So let's not grow weary. Um, doing what is right, do never give up. These are kind of the words that we always get when being servants, because it's hard. Serving in church, be servant of Christ, is not easy. It's not easy, you know. We pass by a lot because we have to handle a lot of situations. Because I always said that when, and I think so, Pastor mentioned that to us on Wednesday. All the time that you try to do God's mission, the devil is attacking for you not doing it. And we see many times when we try to do projects, ministry, when we see in the beginning that it's hard to get it done, and it's when the devil is attacking and see if we're going to give up or not. We just don't give up. We just keep going and keep going and keep going because that's what God wants us to do. So be a servant. It's not the same regular, be a servant of Christ is not the same regular servants, right? It's something different. And when we say talking about be a servant of Christ, is that this is a vocation forever. We give our life to serve Jesus Christ. From the beginning that we receive the call, all the way down to the rest of our life. That's the difference. Another regular servant, in all the regular duties, you know what they're doing. They do their 20 years of service, retirement, bye. That's it, enjoy your retirement. As a servant of Christ, we never saw retirement. We never retire. That's right. <laughs> you have an example behind me. He's been called to retirement many times. He's still behind right here. So we're doing this forever. 
we serve Christ for the rest of our life because that's, that's our call. Not only our call up here, but this is the call of everyone that is belongs to Christian's life. Everyone that belongs to Christianity. Everyone that is children of God. When you're serving God, you're serving God forever. And this is the situation here on earth. When we're serving God, we're doing it with love, passion, humble, because with one for everybody have a reconciliation with God. That's our main goal when we're serving God. We have to use all different systems, ministries, you name it, we do it from teaching, preaching, from go out, knocking doors, Bible story, fellowship hour, that's the best part in here. We all do it for one main reason, and is bring everybody close to God so that everybody have a life with God, a relationship with God, a reconciliation with God. So, what is being a being servant of God? So, being a servant of God is the ones that have been called to serve God or being chose to serve God. Okay? And I explain the difference. Some of us get the call directly and say, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Serve God. Right? We feel the presence of the Holy Spirit in us, telling us, that's what I want to do for the rest of my life. Now, some others be chosen from somebody that see their gift or talents that you have receiving from God and said, I know your potential and what you can do to serve God. He's a big example of chosen people because he always do. Pastor Benke always do that. He always looking around and said, think about those people Right? Think about the next generation of leadership in the church. We always talk about that every single week. And we always come with names of people that we just thinking and put the names down, but we just don't mention the names because we want to mention names is because we see the talents and the gift that they've been receiving from God. So you maybe not receive the call directly, but God putting on us to show you to be the person to move forward in that because we can see it. So, one example, clear example of a servant of God, and that we can take from there of what is this all about, it was our own, our own Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Right? Matthew chapter 20, verse 28. I think so they said that Jesus Christ no became here to to be served, he can be able to serve others, right? It's right there. I have it. I have it more down in here. So this is a big example right there. Jesus Christ, we all know, Son of God, the King of Kings, the one that definitely have all of here and can be served from everybody, came with one mission. It's not was to be served. It's to serve others. In the way that he came to be served, all there is to sacrifice himself so that we all can be saved. So take that bigger example from there. The one that came down from heaven as a human flesh, the king of kings, our Lord and Savior, came here to serve in the way they sacrificed himself so that we now can have the opportunity of forgiveness of sins and salvation. That's, for me, the biggest example of being a servant. Of course, I don't see or I don't say that we all here, we have to serve in that capacity because we know it will be completely impossible. But it gives us an example of how much we put on when we say we are serving God. I don't, know, I don't know you guys, but for me, when I see people 
having that title of being servant of God, I take it serious. Because there's so many others that say I'm serving God when they're not. When they're doing from a benefit. And something that I'm learning here is that when you're serving God, there's no benefit except that you have a relationship with God and that you receive um, that you receive your 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 prize, your 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 prize, your you know, you you be with me, you serving me because you love me. That's our benefit. We serving God because it's a calling our hearts. But it bothers me when I see so many others say I'm serving God because they're looking for a benefit. Because they believe that serving God is more than just serve God because of call. It's because they get well compensed. They're looking for well benefits. They're looking for better life, putting in that words, better life. And then they completely disconnect about serving God because they're starting not to serve themselves. And I have that issue with so many people that I saw having that title when that title is not on them. Is have the title but not have the call, right? So when I need to stand up in here and I ask in a congregation, and I've been doing this in many other congregations that have been visiting now during the Bicorish, um part, when I look at them and I tell them, you guys are here, you're the leaders of this church, you guys need to serve God with all you have. Because that's in the only way that A, your congregation survive, your brothers and sisters be connected with God. You can serve your community, those that are outside, and need to receive that reconciliation with God. You have to do it full time. You have to do it forever. You have to put all efforts. You cannot do it 50-50. You cannot do it, let, see if it's working. You got to put all on so you can get it done. Because at the end, that's the result that we want. That the people get connected back with God. So, when we're talking about serving others, you know, that's what God was, that was Jesus Christ was doing. He was serving others. He you was know, serving himself. He served everybody around him. So we're talking about serving others. Why are we serving others? That's the big question. How I can serve others? Look at what you're doing right now in your life. Look at your neighbor. Look at the person next to you and ask you the question, how I can help the person? How I can help the one next to me? What can be the idea or what I can come up that I can help others and serve others in the way they can be connected with God. Last Wednesday, we start something here. And it was called, it was, it's called, he talk and pray. Right? So, I mean, Stace is here. She's running that new ministry here in St. Peter. So what we do, we eat, because we eat, we talk, we talk of every single situation that happened in our lives, as a group, in there, looking for support for one another, and the most important part then, we pray. We pray in the beginning, we pray in the end, we pray in the middle, we just pray. So that God can give us the guidance and give us the strength that we need during we having that great moment. And when I was sitting down in there, the only thing that happened through my mind is, what a great way to serve others right now. We have a lot of people outside with a lot of anxiety and mental health issues. People that we don't know, they're passing by a lot because we don't know, at least they say it. But they came to a moment like this and they just spread themselves. And this is the thing, when they 
blew it out, they feel better. Because it's like a wave that's coming out of your body and make you now the process of recuperation. Right? And this is a way of how we serve others. We have the sympathy of others or what's going on in their life, but we also got to make sure that whatever it is, we as a congregation, as a spiritual leaders, we got to look forward to seeing that person move on, do better, and most important, have a reconciliation and a life and relationship with God. Because at the end, the one who have full control is God. It's not us, it's Him. At the end, He's the the full control. He's the one that changes stuff around. He's the one that knows where we're going, how we're going. Right? You will tell me all problems and situations, and the first thing that will say, we got to pray. Because God is the one that has control in your life, and He's the one that got to change things around for you. So, we're talking about serving in St. Peter's, this wonderful congregation. And now go ahead and looking into all type of different gifts and talents here in St. Peter. Let's mention it. We have many. We have many that we can use to continue to bring Jesus' ministry alive. So we have good people in here, the teaching. We have really good teachers in Sunday school, BBS. You mentioned it. We have really good teachers here. Really good people. They give their time, their talents, their heart to teaching these kids here. From choir music to drama to Sunday school in the next room, right? We have good preacher behind me right there. Good preacher, good servants. My deacons, fellow deacons right here. We have an excellent fellowship. Nobody can beat us about that. About food. St. Peter is up here in the game. We have people that sing like angels. My fellow choir members, they come up here. And when you sing those songs, I can see your love when you're singing. We have people that are really good to do outreach, talk to people, listen to people, help people to be healed. We have them. We have a good, good, good system in here that is taking care for one another. That in here is stronger than ever. Because sometimes we don't reach out to a person in the church, but when we find out, hey, how you doing? Oh, yeah, you know, sister, whatever, brother, whatever, call me just the other day, find out how I'm doing. This is a key to keep together and to serve others. Just making a phone call and find out how the people is doing and listen to the person, you'll be serving these people already. So, and of course, our number one I will be say our number one thing in St. Peter. We go to pray. Our prayer time in here is amazing. I've been going to different congregations and how we pray in St. Peter, I don't see it in other places. The personal prayer moment in here is connecting you with God. I feel in every single prayer when we are connecting one another and we connect them with God. I feel God's presence as soon as we pray. Because we pray with our hearts and we pray for one another. Sometimes I don't have to stand up in here and pray for myself. I've got to pray for you. Because I care about what's going on with you. And then at the end I say, oh, God, no, don't forget about me. Just put it at the end. Don't worry about it. But let's take care of my brothers and sisters first. Our prayer time in here is amazing. I just early do a little clean up to put stuff up here. And I just see the list of prayers and prayers and prayers. And it's amazing. We have a little box in the office when people now drop off the little prayers so that we can take those prayers out and put it into our daily prayers here by the spiritual leaders. And in just one day, I think it's already 20 
prayers inside in there in just one day because we con we pray all the time in here. Every day. It's not stopping. And you praying for your brother or sister. Guess what, guys? You're serving, the, you're serving your brother and sister. Just taking that moment during your prayers, you're asking for your neighbor. For those that you believe and understand, they need God's help and blessings and protection and health. Just you taking that moment, you're serving. And when you're serving others, because that inspiration that you receive from the Holy Spirit, you're serving God. Right there, you're serving God directly. So when we came here and said we are servant of God, we're only talking about us up here. We're talking about everyone that take a moment and serve others. Because that's what they receive. That's the inspiration and motivation they receive from the Holy Spirit. And we can do it. We all can do it. You don't have to be called an ordained minister, commissioner minister, fellow spiritual leader. You just have to be a great Christian brother or sister. Then said, I serve in God serving others. So that's what we put in the team today. We are servants to serve. We cannot just be a servant in the title. We need to serve, but let's serve in the right way by the inspiration and motivation through the Holy Spirit. We love, with patience, with kindness. Let's serve one another. Let's serve those outside that need to receive these words and receive the holy meal and get baptized and understand that Jesus Christ don't, don't die only for me or for you. Jesus Christ also died for them. If we continue to doing this, we will continue to have our mission standing up. And we have a mission statement here and always say that is reaching with the love of God, with the love of Jesus through thought, worth, and deed. I always put it that we're reaching out to others, not only with words, but it's always with action. We're showing the love of God to others, not only standing up and preaching about it. I always say, whatever you preach, what you teach, and what you put in an action. So it's good to stand up, preach, and say, this is what we got to do. But it's not also say, this is what we got to do is let's go and do it. Starting from here to there, to a side of the, um, of the doors. We need to get everybody back connected to us. We need to get everybody back connected with God, the most important. How the time is we live in right now, is things happening every day. I think so the more than before, we need to everybody understand that God is real and that they need God in their life. So, my brothers and sisters, in this fourth Sunday after Pentecost, in this last 24 hour of the celebration of the 4th of July, the independence of the United States of America, may God bless you and may God bless America. Congregation, please stand. Let's turn to page six of our bulletins. We're going to we continue the Nicene Creed. We begin. I believe, I believe in, in one, one God, God Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Begotten of his Father, Father before, before all worlds, worlds. God, God of God, God light of light, light very, very God, God of very God, God. begotten God not made, being of one substance with the Father, Father by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down, down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. 
And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and descended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, and I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Please have a seat. Thank you very much, Audrey. Both sides. A two-sided prayer page here. So now we're going to talk about climate control for a minute. So every church has a climate it needs to control. Lutherans have been called by many people around the world the frozen chosen. And the reason is because we're very like this. Now this church is not so frozen. We move around, we get our tambo going. But we, inside this building, we have a problem because either you're going to be frozen if you're up here, or you're gonna be warm if you're back there. So I'm going over here. I'm going to turn this back on because otherwise it's gonna get, are, are you in the back okay? Want a little warmth, cold, coolness? I just turned the air conditioning on, if you notice what I did. And you're good with that. Okay. This is where most of the uh, frozenness happens up here. All right, that's one thing. So I'm going to do one other thing based on the theme for today. Okay, I'm going to give a testimony about servants, serving others from the heart. So we're back to our fellowship hour today. Do you know that? We have cold beverages and goodies in the parish hall. It's all about sugar. So uh, we did that. So somebody had to organize that yesterday, or and this morning really, and that was me. Am I any good at this? No, thank you. You know, I don't like that kind of honesty. That's not good. So no, that's not my gift. This is not my gift. My gift is being served. Give me the food, you know, no. That, so I did this, I got it, and I came here this morning, and I was just not doing well with it. And then somebody came into the building who came for the 9 a.m. service. Yes, not the 9.30, but the 9. And this, this person looked at me, looking very poorly in terms of organizing this thing, and she said the thing that a, a good servant says, I got this, I've got this. Let me take this. That was Bernadine sitting right back there. So I want to know, Ber Bernie, thank you for serving. And uh, it wasn't like she said, well, if you guess if you can't do it, I will. She just said, please get out of the way. And I got this. Because she knew she knows how to do it. And she wanted to serve. That's what this thing is about, see? It's, it's about spontaneity. I see what's up and I got it. And we'll talk about it more later, but I wanted to make sure that you know that whatever is good in that other room did not come from me, it came from her. Okay, hair for the prayers. In mourning and loss for Rob and Donald, that's from uh, Brenda. And of course for Joycelyn from Mohan. And then from uh, Stanley, did I see Stanley here? For Stan, for all of those you are thinking about in your life and heart, Stanley, especially Chris, and then uh, your wife, and your mom and dad, all in our prayers. So we pray now for those sick and suffering, for Joseph Velasquez, back, hip, and ankles, for healing for Anthony, and uh, Margaret, and Jackie, from Jackie, right there. For Norman, for Maria, Maria Cristello, for Andrew, Andrew Ryan, for Martha, Merlene, Flora, Clary, Flora, Jacqueline, Carrie, and others. And you know who sent that prayer in? That's Maria. Uh, prayer for our deeply divided union on the 4th of July. Prayer for the USA. Prayer for guidance for Sevi and Elvis and children, Sonia and family, 
A Ariana, who is sick. For Ariana, uh, Adrian, back there from Stanley. For Yvonne and Francis, guidance for the Llewellyn and Paul families, Brenda and family, Gloria and family, Carolyn and family, Lauren Camden's grandma, for guidance for Lauren. For the Ryan and Isley families, prayers for guidance and strength. Eddie and Velma, back there, for guidance and healing. For Audrey's family, Susan and Karen, row four. For Maria's family and friends, especially Taffy and Dylan in the Navy. And then we're going to go over here for a minute and come back for birthdays. For a guidance, Stanley Subrian, John and Nina and family, Chandra and Mala and Sophia and family, all from Stanley. For Eunice, Kenneth and Chris in memory. For Gary, for health and guidance. Guidance for Sunita and family, for the Stephen, Stephen and Christina and the Chattergoon family. For all my family, for Larity and Marchan family, for guidance, I should say. That's from Bernadine. For guidance and continued good health for the Junior family, Simone and Malcolm, Sharon, and for Mohan's family. Then over here we have Lori, uh, Lori Cristello's retirement from the New York City DOE, the, uh, the uh, Board of Ed, okay. For Logan Ryan for a promotion to the 12th grade, passing his SATs. For Marina's birthday today. Oh, you know what, that, that hand, it's somebody's handwriting. This was Karen's birthday today. Big hand, Karen. A true Yankee Doodle Dandy, huh? July 3rd, that's wonderful. Wow. I bet you got a flag for your birthday every year, huh? <laughs> and uh, congratulations to my grandson who is graduating today. Your grandson. Beautiful. That's for Maria. Graduation. And now we'll go to other people here, and then we have the uh, online versions. Uh, Brenda? Rashawn? Prostate. Okay. And that's in a serious situation, so we've got to keep that. Special prayer for Darian Hines. I received a call yesterday. She needs our prayers, uh, strong prayers, uh, in a health, kind of a health crisis there, yeah. Steve? June Ryan with vertigo, sit up very straight, don't move your head. I know, I've been to that party, that's tough. Okay, David? Gita, of course, our fellowship chair personally responsible for all the cookies in there today. No. And for the whole Chandidat family. Okay. Uh, Sonia, so, did you have your hand up? Bingo! I called yesterday. I got, did not get through. This is great. I called the number and they said, I don't know that person at all. So I'm glad she's home. It's good. Diane Miller. Miller. Ida, Pam, Cole, and then uh, Diane Giordano, and Yvonne, and Francis in Florida. Jackie? Yeah, for Wendy, and we get, some of us get a beautiful passage from the Bible for her, from her every day in, in a text. So for Wendy, for healing. Yeah, really? Okay. In. Uh, are there other prayers from the online resource? Oh, somewhere we have it. Okay. Andy? Bonilla, Cronin, Diaz family? And Ram Samuj down in North Carolina? Beverly? Yeah. Birthday today? Beverly's birthday? Yeah, Beverly Flores. Beverly Flores. Yeah. 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 Beverly Flores
Beverly Flores. Happy birthday, Bev. So pray for the Kemp family. Yes. Kemp, Latham. For Louis Kemp in the hospital. Louis Kemp, okay. For the Russian family. Okay. Okay. We got any others back there? I, I'm just looking around with my cataract here. Yes. Sarah, Augustine, and the kids traveling to another country, Canada. Not that bad. By car, I'm thinking. Back in the back right, Gary. Oh, that's for Leela. Okay, Leela. Yes, for you and the family and all those that you're taking care of and caring for yourself at the same time. Leela Dindial. Uh, June? From where? Walla Walla, Washington? Oh, gua <laughs> ear, ear problem, ear problem. Return from Guatemala, not Walla Walla, Guatemala. Okay, I got it. And for Lily was prior to that, Gary? Uh, yes, that was at the very beginning. Okay. Okay. Are we ready to pray? It's a lot of time just getting ready to pray. Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace today, and first of all, we adore and magnify you for the precious gift uh, of our lives, of our freedoms, of our acknowledgement that the world belongs to you. We glorify and magnify your name. We adore you and, and lift you up today. And may we as your servants not be about ourselves or even about our service, but about you. May we just always focus our thoughts, hearts, and minds on the glory and the wonder of your love for us, manifested so especially in the gift of Jesus, who died for us and rose again that we might have life. Lord, in your mercy, we pray now, Father, for those many needs that we have on our hearts today, for those mourning the loss of loved ones and for those sick and suffering, first of all. When we mourn, we understand that our lives pass as in an instant, and we can't reclaim them, especially if those whom we love are taken from us. And so, Father, we ask that we draw near to you in those moments to understand the eternal love that you have for us that takes us from this time into the eternal time where we can magnify your name forever. Bless those who mourn. And we ask, Father, that at the same time, those who are sick and in need of healing, physical, mental, spiritual, or emotional, those who are filled with anxiety, those who are understanding life not to be their friend at this time, that people might, in those moments, be sent out to bring a word of hope and encouragement, that we might be encouragers even as we have been encouraged. Give doctors and nurses and those who care for others exactly the medicine and tools they need. May we, as we share with one another our burdens, know that you are carrying our burden because we can cast all our cares upon you. Give us the gift of healing in the great physician, Lord, in your mercy. We pray now prayers of thanksgiving for the gift of life for those celebrating birthdays today for those graduating, for those with moving on up experiences. And we ask Heavenly Father that whenever we have a time to celebrate, it might begin with the acknowledgement that the great moment of celebration is every day when we can say, Lord, have mercy, and you do have mercy on us. So grant many days of joy for those celebrating birthdays today and the year to come, and help them to walk on that highway to heaven. Lord, in your mercy. We pray now for our country, Father, and it's a, it is a time of great division and difficulty. We pray for our city, which always is a hot time in the summer. We pray for our, our leaders, that they be given wisdom from on high. We pray that as that wisdom manifests itself, that it might not lead us to pick and choose and carry weapons and do all the negative things that we can think of, but instead to seek peace because the Prince of Peace is the ruler of all. Lord, in your mercy. 
We ask, Father, now that you would bless us through this holiday weekend as we have sung your praises here. May we carry them from this place, strong and blessed in your almighty love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we're going to collect, uh, collect our offerings. And then at the end of that, no, we're going to sing this right from the start. This is one of those songs we haven't sung in a while because we didn't have an offering. You know, you just left your offering at the back. Now we offer you our Father. Remember this song? If you don't remember it, listen to those who do, and you'll catch it by the second verse. We continue with the offering. and our time as the fields of wheat now growing will become a holy sign so shall we reveal you Jesus that in you now we may shine now we offer you our father with the bread and with the wine all our burdens and all our sorrows, all our struggles and our time. In these gifts we see our oneness through our city and the field. And we find a life of solace where the scars of life are healed. Now we offer you our Father with the bread and with the wine all our joys and all our sorrows all our struggles and our time we sing glory to the father and to christ who lives above and we praise the holy spirit for the gift to us of love now we offer you our father with the bread and with the wine all our joys and all our sorrows all our struggles and our time let us pray Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him would not perish but have eternal life. Send your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that he may establish in us that wonderful living faith and prepare us joyfully to remember our Redeemer and receive him who comes to us in his body and blood. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples. He said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner also after, cup, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. And join your hands as, as appropriate and we will sing together our song of unity. We are one in Christ and we are one in praying to our Father who is in heaven. Our Father
Peace of the Lord be with you all. Share that peace appropriately in every possible way because it is the peace of the Lord that is with you. Wonderful. As you have finished that moment, let us, uh, you may have a seat. We continue with the Lord's meal. We have two songs, uh, Jacob's Ladder, and the second one is Nothing But the Blood of Jesus. Very good. So we're thankful on this holiday weekend that we can always claim the blood of Jesus who saves us and sets us free. Come, for the feast is prepared.
And now, please take and eat. The body of Christ is given for you. And take and drink the blood of Christ which is shed for you. May this, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus, keep you strong in the faith, keep you loving one another, keep us serving one another in joy, and grant you peace now and eternally. Depart in peace. Amen. Can you please stand? Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a fortress of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in true faith through all your days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming, we meet together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Receive now the benediction of Almighty God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a seat for a second. There we go. That's a really good mask, but very tight on my face. I can now feel my face again. There it is. Okay. Welcome on this holiday weekend. We're getting used to the 9.30. Thank you, Bernie, for coming at 9. Thanks some of the rest of you for coming at 10. And there'll probably be some people coming at 11. Who can say? Uh, we'll just keep worshiping God. Every Sunday, 9.30, for the next two, three months, We'll see how this works out in the fall, actually. Uh, and then it doesn't work out in the fall. No, said the 10 o'clock people. The 9 o'clock people say, yes, it does. Uh, fight, church fight. We'll fight over the time of the worship service. Uh, second thing is uh, Wednesday nights. The worship at Wednesday, online and in person, is going to be at 7.15. Why is that? Why would we do that? Something so terrible as moving at 15 minutes. Because we're meeting at 6 with Eat, Talk, Pray. Eat, Talk, Pray is an open group. Are we still open for participants? It's a, and we're meeting in the parish hall where you will go in a moment if you'd like to for your goodies. Because they start by eating at 6. 6 p.m. 6. That one there. 6. This one. And then at 7, they, they can't do, eat, and talk, and pray in that quick a time. So we need an extra 15 minutes. So that, then at 7.15, we come in here. One, sun, one Wednesday every month is a healing service in which we have the healing oil. Uh, that's on a couple, sun, a couple Wednesdays from now. But otherwise, there is a regular service of prayer, casual, casual dress, where uh, we just sing and talk about uh, things that we think are important on that week. I'm pretty sure we'll take up the theme of serving again on this Wednesday because it was so strong. We thank God, thanks Jose for your sermon this morning, blessing us with the message. <laughs> Furthermore, what's going to be happening is that these, so we have a pretty much of a cycle, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Uh, I'll be one, they'll be two and three. Uh, but it goes one, two, three, one, two, three, through Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday, Wednesday. But they're going to be gone a bunch in the summer on Sundays because they're preaching in other people's churches. I, I may go to the bishop and say, why don't I go and preach in other people's churches? And you know why? I don't care about it. I'd, I'd rather be here. Uh, so, <laughs> right? Uh, I could do that, but I'm staying here. So, on and off we go through the summer but if you don't see one of them or even both of them you will know why uh, they're helping out at other churches that's part of the vicarage and you will know this that in the next months we're going to have both of these uh, men ordained or called we have to have a meeting to 
extend to them a call to serve here as associate pastors and then as they are or as they are certified then they can be ordained it's called called and ordained so you have to have a call before you can get ordained uh, so that will take place in the next three four months here let's get ready for it because we also have a little thing called the 125th anniversary of our church and we've got a dinner at Russo's on the bay you know where that is it's on the bay uh, it's on Cross Bay and uh, that's on November 20th 20 November 20 not 13 but 20 so we'll get all that info out there I put out a list of all the themes for the worship services through the summer we're in pretty good shape here but we need people we need a couple more announcements a Nadira has told me with the, her eyes only no words were said but she said have people see me after church I read that in her eyes and sign up for fellowship hour in the summer okay if you want to do a fellowship hour in this in this time we're going back to fellowship hour it, it could be juice it could be iced tea which we have today it could be cakes it could be fruit plates which were very high on those fruit plates why are we high on them because we had them at my or ordination anniversary thing and the guy who makes those fruit plates up they were really good is Mike Sanseron so we can bring in fruit plates as well as a a more healthy alternative to the Entenmann's that you're going to get this morning uh, see <laughs> right Entenmann's there can't be anything wrong with that place come on those are Germans those are probably Lutherans uh, see Gita you want to stand and face them just right there if you want to take one now that's 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 she what if you wanted to provide a little more of them something substantial can they do that yes they can the answer was yes the, there's there's no uh, reno, reno going on in that room this summer that I and I know of the reno is on, the renovations are on the outside of Hale Avenue big time and in the kitchen bigger time so they will not disturb the parish hall but we should be careful about the way we're moving around the building now uh, baseball baseball Judy wanted to say something about the Cyclones game Just a couple extras. This is the Brooklyn Cyclones game on in Coney Island. Beautiful stadium. It's really nice. There's a giveaway of something, probably a bobblehead, a cap. It's a it's an alarm clock, a free alarm clock. You need one. Some of you that came late. Uh, then you get the alarm clock, you get the fireworks, and the cost of that ticket is 12 American dollars. That's, that's almost a cup of coffee at uh, Starbucks. The, uh, anyway, the other thing we have on the baseball front is free tickets. Tickets that cost this many dollars for this Thursday's Mets game at City Field at 7 o'clock. And I have a limited supply of maybe 10, maybe less than that left, but I think I could even get some more. And this comes from a friend of ours who's a wonderful Mets fan, and uh, he, 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 uh, he had a tragedy in his family. He's a wonderful guy, and his, his child was killed um, early on in life. And he runs a, a race every year in, in honor of that, in memory of that child. And the Mets, hearing about this, have given him a good stock of free tickets to Thursday night's game. So you have to get there on your own. That's my only question. You have to get there. 
But once you're there, you would have these tickets, and Judy would. We, Judy will need your your contact info if you want to go, because she she gets them and emails the ticket to you. They're mobile. They don't even have hard copy tickets anymore. No. Cyclones, yes. Mets, no. But it's a freebie, right? So if you like baseball and you like to see the Metsies, that's this Thursday. And there's a limited amount of those, but I think I can negotiate to a higher amount. Other than that, so we're going we're gonna to get onward and upward with our Vacation Bible School uh, this summer and other beautiful things here. Uh, anybody got anything else for the good and welfare? Very happy with Wednesday night. I want to thank those who prepared the food Wednesday night. That would be uh, Ashley and Colette, who are sitting right here. They did the food. What did we have Wednesday night? Fried chicken, yes, which I had a lot of, and rice and peas, which I also had a lot of. So, and salad, which I did not eat at all. I had no salad. Yeah, I had the vegan chicken. Uh, anyway, do you need people to volunteer to do that? Am I correct? We need people to take that challenge. If you're coming on Wednesday to say, I will come and I will bring a covered dish, a dish covered with chicken, uh, whatever it is you want. Okay? So, let's talk about it over coffee hour, which is a fellowship hour. There's no coffee, but the fellowship hour in the parish hall, right after our final hymn. You can walk from here back to there if you'd like, or you can head on out. But we do have enough food back there for pretty much everybody here. We're going to conclude with, this is a Caribbean song, okay? The right hand of God is writing in our land. Now, I, I changed the last verse because it says in our Caribbean lands, but I changed it in our native lands, okay? Not all of us are Caribbean. I am only an honorary Caribbean. Right hand of God. Ready? Let's rise and sing. Here we go. Bouncy beat. Go in peace and serve the Lord.